What's up, Internet? Um, this is the model I put onto Reddit and Facebook um, and Instagram and anywhere I could because it took me a long time and I felt good about it. So there you go. So here's the axe. The axe itself is uh, heavily rusted and I'm going to try to do a little bit of a rust texture tutorial. Um, in, this, in this example or in this model, because the axe, I, I went into it knowing that the axe is going to be heavily corroded. There are some areas that are not corroded entirely, like this fin on his head, uh, this kind of shoulder spike. It does have a little bit of rust texture on it. And of course, there's this knee, um, whatever this is, knee blade. And this is kind of the initial one that I did. And <clears throat> I didn't want every single uh, steel surface to be the same. The paint is the same. The paint that I used is almost the same, like I've used the same paint over and over and over, but I have kind of varied the effects a little bit so that it didn't all look completely uniform. And you can see this shoulder badge is almost not rusted at all. Um, so anyhow, um, I'm going to try to do something like that. And um, just a quick talk about rust. Rust texture is... Um, you know, it's kind of it's to to for really on most on most models and most areas, you don't want to go overboard. You don't want to overwhelm the I guess composition, although that sounds like a pretentious thing to say. You don't want to overwhelm with rust because then it's not going to look quite right. There's a book that I um, wish I could remember the name of the author, but it's a weathering book, and basically what he says is a, a dusty tank is not a tank covered in dust. What he was trying to say is, is that you want to keep your weathering effects subtle, you want to keep them limited, and you want to keep them to, you know, enhance. And of course, less is more and all that. So um, I still will rust uh, the crap out of this guy's little pistol here or this little uh, warp fire thrower. But and with and with the Lord of Contagion, I mean, his axe is super rusted, so it's really, it's up to you. It's all about personal taste. I've tried to do the same thing on the dome back here. Earlier it was a little wet, and I didn't like the way it was coming out, but now I see it's got some pretty juicy texture on there. So, you know, I'm okay with that. When it dried, it kind of got a little bit lighter. And um, so anyways, let's talk about some of the paint we're going to be using. I'm going to be using the Vallejo Rust Texture. This is kind of a reddish rust texture, um, and when I say reddish, I mean that the paint itself is red and there's grit in it, and it's a lot like this uh, technical effect from GW, Typhus Corrosion. Difference being this is primarily just like a brownish, grayish, greenish color, as opposed to the Vallejo, which more is more of a burnt umber. Burnt umber, like the umber, raw umber, when you burn it, it turns red, so that's why it's called burnt umber. Anyways, so I like, you know, both are cool, and, and really when it comes to rust, it, it doesn't really uh, matter. So it's more up to the to the painter themselves to kind of decide which direction they want the color to go. So anyways, let's start off, and uh, like I said, I'll try to do something similar. Oh, I still haven't talked about the pigment. Here's a couple of the pigments I'm going to use, and on that model... Uh, burnt sienna and natural sienna. On that model I used a little bit of pigment fixer which was on the desk and now it's not. So it's a Vallejo pigment fixer. It's pretty much, here it is, pigment binder. It's like this clear kind of matte stuff. You can use that uh, and it kind of adds a little bit of body. It lets the um, it lets the paint kind of chunk up and coagulate especially when you add pigments to it. It kind of, it makes that grittiness kind of, it, it keeps the body of it so it builds on itself and then you get those textures on the model, uh, which is, you know, kind of what we're talking about. So anyways, I'm just going to take my Vallejo rust texture. I'm going to water it down a little bit. It's the brush had a ton of water already and I'm just going to liberally apply it. And this base color is just a intermediate blue and black, uh, mostly because I wanted a sort of neutral but dark base color, and I was hoping that that was going to help me draw out this effect. 
Um, like I said, I've tried this a bunch of times because um, I want to give the people what they want. Uh, I do have an interest in doing YouTube. I just really like with a full-time job and a family, um, sometimes I'm not able to do as much as I want. And in fact, uh, just getting miniatures painted sometimes is more than it seems like I can handle. So, okay, now we're drying. I'm gonna get the hair dryer and speed that up a little bit. Okay, so the rust texture has dried. It's had a little bit of chunkiness. So now um, let's let's go ahead and let's give it another coat. And with this particular product, um, and with all weathering, it's really it's important to kind of build slowly, and let uh, let the effect kind of um, grow slowly especially with rust, dust, mud, anything like that. If you just slop on one coat and make it as heavy as you can and then call it a day and say, all right, that looks good. That's fine. I mean, it might look good to you, but it's it's really, it's not going to have that kind of nuanced appearance of real life. The thing about most uh, textures is that if you look at them, they're built up so if you look at any stains like a fuel stain or a mud stain or anything like that for it to be the most convincing you need several layers so there needs to be like wet mud and dry mud and in between mud and the more colors and textures you add the more uh, realistic it becomes and also you have to you have to um, kind of layer them transparently otherwise it's just going to be like all kinds of stuff caked on there now this actually this back here it is a little caked on but I mean there is a little rust texture there unfortunately like I said not quite as successful as we wanted so now here's the second coat and I'll probably I'll probably call it right here as far as the texture goes but we will add more with the um, we're gonna use our life color paint which I can highly recommend it's the diorama series the dust and rust set and then I'm going to add on the palette I don't know if you can see it but there is some pigment and paint and I've kept them separate because I'm going to use initially I'm going to put pigment into the paint and then I'm going to subsequently uh, after I've got the texture I want later on I'm going to just use paint to sort of uh, tweak um, how the rust looks and you can you can get a very satisfactory uh, rust um, looking texture without even using pigments or grit like I have on this particular model um, there are many successful examples of just using paint to simulate a rust texture so don't think like I said this isn't the only way this is just a way I chose <laughs> um, and really, you know, part of part of becoming, um, you know, a miniature painter is sort of uh, figuring out what works for you, what doesn't, kind of like what fits your lifestyle. And I say what fits your lifestyle, that sounds a little bit um, probably beyond the scope of what we're talking about right now. But like my lifestyle was not conducive to my style of painting. I was spending far too much time on individual uh, sections and little moments on the miniature making trying to make everything perfect uh, and ultimately not achieving perfection uh, also driving myself crazy and also kind of really harming my long-term productivity because I was looking at it I wasn't satisfied I wasn't really I wasn't really willing to commit I wasn't really willing to like go to a mountaintop somewhere find some guru and have him you know beat me night and day until I figured out how to paint miniatures like an expert um, kind of like uh, Uma Thurman and Kill Bill I mean I was just I was making myself crazy and I was more I think I was more in love with saying I like to paint miniatures than actually painting them so you know once once uh, our tastes kind of develop and once our lives kind of change at least for me 
again, we're going we're going deep here, guys. Once our lives change a little bit, uh, what we're able to do kind of needs to adjust. And so that's when I started moving more towards this in my painting. You know, I wanted effects that were uh, that required more planning than technique. So when with anything like with rust or whatever, when I say it required more planning than technique, I'm really talking about um, just having uh, really okay planning. Planning is important. You want to know what colors you're going to use. You want to kind of have a general idea of what rust looks like, and you're going to want to kind of map out ahead of time what areas you're going to cover, but also. Uh, something that's important for weathering is you need to have you need to exercise judgment and restraint. So this all sounds a lot more uh, serious than it is, but really, like once you're once you exercise that judgment muscle, <laughs> that restraint muscle, you're going to start to see the changes in your own painting. So initially, do much less than you think you would want. And then kind of evaluate, you know, kind of post it, say, hey, guys, I'm working on a rust texture. What do you think? And sleep on it and then come back to it and say, oh, does this need more? Does it not? And also do your do your homework, do your studying, look at rust, find stuff in the real world. I uh, I usually take pictures of like rusty pillars and pieces of machinery, you know, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that really is going to inspire you. I don't necessarily pull it out as often as I should, but it is, it is kind of a hobby of mine. I'm not into photography. I'm just into taking pictures of really old junk. <laughs> so, anyhow, uh, we've got some rust building up. So like I said, now um, I'm probably going to go away from using the pigment in the paint, and now I'll just use diluted orange uh, rust paint. And I'll be, I'll still... I'm out of focus there. Okay, so I'll apply it here. And with with this miniature, I need to pull this guy out again because I want to make a point. With this Lord of Contagion, you can see on his axe, this probably is not how rust is going to form in real life. Rust in real life is a lot more haphazard. It's not nearly, if you notice, what I've chosen to do is emphasize kind of this opening in the axe right here. I've put the lighter colors here. I've also put in lighter colors in each one of these holes. And what that does is that allows you to see the definition, the volume of the hole. And um, I've used black paint and brown paint to kind of darken up this area so that this uh, upper part kind of gets raised off of the axe a little bit. So all of this stuff that I've done to this axe isn't necessarily exactly how something would rust in real life. What I've done is I've kind of taken the general principles of how to uh, or what rust looks like and I've kind of modified them to do something that is pleasing to me and hopefully the viewer. So that's like what you need to hold foremost in your mind when you're doing this stuff is really being 100% accurate, that's not really what our goal is. At least it's not my goal. I want something that looks cool, but it doesn't have to be a perfect representation. I want to use uh, the contours of the model. Well, we have to use the contours of the model to kind of try to express ourselves. That's how we're going to communicate with the viewer, with ourselves, what, you know what it looks like so if we don't if we just leave it like this see how it is right now we can't really make out any of the detail over here this one's doing okay I mean we can kind of see that there's a little bit of a little uh, ridge and a little gap right here because I've put rust in there but other than that like you would really need to be up close to kind of see this stuff so I'm gonna do a little more maybe go back to my darker color to give a little bit of interest and variety I'll go up here. Oh, I already went up there. So let's go down here. Let's go down here. Let's add a little bit of that. A little bit more of this. 
and then finally I'm going to finish off with maybe a lighter color. Now if all you have is typhus corrosion and rizzo rust, you can get a really good effect. So don't worry about exact colors. That's not really something you should beat yourself up about. I have a video on the channel about exact color matching and that kind of thing. And really, you could, you could give me and Ben Comets the exact same model. Give us the exact same colors. And guess whose model is going to look amazing and whose model is going to look probably pretty pedestrian. Okay? This is all about... Uh, technique and color because something says rust on it it doesn't matter just make sure it's the right color look at the color think in color don't think in labels I mean the paint labels are awesome but you know you know what I'm trying to say here so uh, now um, I probably and uh, I definitely went a lot further with my own model but I'm trying to keep this you know a reasonable length so now, uh, just to give it that metallic sheen, I'm going to use, oh, this is a uh, oh, gun metal. MIG pigments, branded, flames of war, gun metal pigment. And something else, this is a pro tip, this is pretty advanced technology, but I like to keep a piece of cardboard nearby. I'm going to rub that in with my finger. Give us a little bit of a metallic sheen there. This is going to kind of bring back a little bit of the metallic. And it's sometimes hard, depending on how fat your finger is. Like if you have big sausage fingers like me, it's going to it's going to take a little bit of finesse. And you might just have to get a brush and get in there. And you can also do this like if you had a gunmetal type paint and a dry brush. You don't need to do this with your finger. Uh, this is just a way. So we've kind of got back a little more, uh, a little bit more of the me metallic than we want. So now um, with the I'm looking for a brush here, guys. Okay, so with the uh, pigment applied, I've still got a little bit of pigment on the surface. I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of loose. So I'm going to just burnish it and also kind of knock off some of the excess pigment. And then have another peek. So it's kind of starting to take on that rusty tone, but it's also got a little bit of the edges highlighted with metallic, which gives us back a little bit of the metallic. And that's essentially what I did on the axe, except the axe is a big flat plane that you can kind of, it's a lot easier to, uh, you know, edge it with the metallics and also lay in the rust. This is a cylinder and it's a bit more of a complex shape so it's gonna need a little bit more um, probably gonna have to work with it a little bit more to get the right look but anyways this is kind of a this is the rusty texture tutorial I think we've kind of made our point and I hope that this helps and uh, you know comment like Tell me what you guys are interested in. Tell me if this is in, forgive the amateurish quality. I know that this is like super lo-fi and I'm, I'm just, I'm just getting started. So you'll have to bear with me. Touched up this guy a little bit back here. Give him a little bit of the rusty sheen back. So anyways, thanks for watching and let me know what you think.